Imagine a world, if you will, in which you're able to make a Boros Convoke deck scoop because you played too many creatures in a single turn. Well, in today's video, welcome back, ghouls and goblins. Hope you're having a magical day. Thank you for taking the time. My name is Hello Good Game. Pleased to be your host. In this video, we will break down our latest deck list in depth, discussing the strategies and synergies, providing you with a deeper understanding of how to pilot this deck effectively and efficiently. Furthermore, we'll demonstrate this within our ranked gameplay footage against the best decks as well as players, concluding with our wrap-up thoughts, channel news, deck review, everything groovy. Leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, join the community discord, but most importantly, kick back, relax, and let's take a look at the new deck. It's a new lap record. Locally, locally. Naya Voltborn, Volt 33 version 2, is a three color deck green, red, and white for standard best of one. 60 cards with a 2.8 average mana value, supported by 24 land. We are building around Old Tech Matter Weaver for three, a 2 4, and whenever you cast a creature spell, either create a 1 1 colorless gnome or create a token uh, that's a copy of target artifact token that you control which is BEA beautiful and uh, you know we're going to turn hopefully uh, ourselves Voltec Matter Weaver into an artifact token via molten duplication for two mana a sorcery create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control except it's an artifact in addition to its other types it's going to gain haste until the end of turn sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step so it's not just the matter weaver that we need in play it's not just the molten duplication that we need in hand but we will also need in hand and the available mana to cast on the same turn a second creature you know, this can be a veteran, a wormlet for one, very easy to do, which will then trigger Ultek's ability again. And now we are using the second mode, creating a token that's a copy of target token artifact you control, which will be itself. And the one that you copy will stay, right? So the molten duplication one will self-sacrifice. Uh, the one that you copy with the two triggers because there's going to be the original and the molten, uh, those new ones will stay, and then you can build on that, uh, which is really, really nice. So um, that's the whole deck. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy, right? Uh, we'll also utilize some life gain in the build, which is really nice, uh, that are easy to play on top of this, right? Quick triggers. Lunark Veteran, a 1-1. One, one. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. This is also nice via the Disturb. If we don't have the creature to play on top, we can kind of get one via combat. Uh, unlocking the Phantom from our grave via the Disturb. A 1-1 one, one with flying whenever another creature leaves the battlefield. Uh, we're gonna gain one life here. Uh, so enters the battlefield, gain life, leaves the battlefield, gain life. That's great for sustainability and damage mitigation. The Teething Wormlet will be fulfilling the similar role as a one mana one one. When an artifact enters the battlefield, gain one life, right? Uh, so these gnomes are artifacts. Gala creates treasures, which are artifacts. Uh, and then of course, Molten Duplication will create artifacts and then we're gonna go crazy with that. Uh, as everything's going to be an artifact at that point, and the Vault Born also generating artifacts there. If you have three or more artifacts, it's going to have Death Touch, and when the first artifact enters the battlefield, each turn put a plus one, plus one counter on it, so it's growing, right? It's a grower, not a shower, um, which is decent. And then Gallagher's here as well, uh, similar, right? Kind of uh, both of them in one. A 1-1 one, one for two with Alliance triggering one that's not been triggered this turn of the following three. Putting a plus one, plus one counter on it, creating a tapped treasure, gaining two life. And this is whenever a creature enters the battlefield, of course, right? So additional life gain for us. We can also create the treasure, which is pretty decent. Um, and then, you know, powering up as our last resort. And then on top of the cheap creatures, we have uh, Jared, Mirror of the Wilds, three mana, three, three with haste. Non-token creatures you control have tap create a token that's a copy of target token that you control that's entered the battlefield this turn this will be additional matter weavers i would assume 
and uh, you know the more of these that we can put in play and then cast a creature on top of uh, it really does just snowball uh, exponentially for us which is a lot of fun uh, top end because we have so many ETBs triggering, why not use Terror of the Peaks for 5, a 5-4 five, with flying. Your opponent can't target it unless they pay 3 life. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Terror will deal damage equal to its power to any target. Thank you very much. And of course the Vaultborn Tyrant here as well for 7 as a 6-6 six, six with Trample. Whenever it or another creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield, gain 3 life, draw a card, thank you. And whenever it dies, if not exiled, if it's not a token, uh, an artifact token, uh, create one, which is crazy good because now the Matter Weaver can organically target it without even using a Molten Duplication. That's the bee's knees, right? So the Tyrant with the Matter Weaver just working so good together and then unlocking the damage via the Terror is quite nice. Of course, we have all this life gain early on, you know, to sustain against these aggro decks. Um, and then, you know, some removal as well three copies of strangle one mana three damage to creature or planeswalker or ossification two mana um this does need to enchant basic land so keep that in mind um but it can take creature or planeswalker um regardless until it leaves the battlefield which is pretty nice uh, i like it it's not bad with some utility lands in the deck through the endures the empire and of course the crucible uh our pain lands because we have so much life gain we don't really mind so much just making our mana base super duper consistent. A couple slow lands, because we don't want too many, as it is a quick aggressive curve. It's much easier to play these later. Um, and then, like I said, a decent amount of basics for that ossification, okay? Uh, a fantastic deck that I'm having a lot of fun with right now. Um, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy today's gameplay. It's some of the most entertaining matches I've played in some time. So make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member, join the community Discord, but most importantly, kick back, relax, and enjoy. Going first. I like a few of these things. There's no basics for ossification yet. in slow so we can avoid some life loss. Interesting. I love the shuffler. It always gives me the exact card I need. Like a basic land. Even just a, f a fourth untapped specifically would be great. Mm, that's not five. So there's no convoke. Just scrying. Which is good. Right? Plus one counter as well. We save it for now. Looking for our fourth. Here comes the Convoke. No Convoke yet. They're looking for it. The Scry helps you find it, which is really good. And it looks like they do find it. Oh no. They're doing the thing. Yeah, vigilance attacks now. Great. So I need a basic land off the top. What kind of monster presses attack all? A Boros Convoke player, I'll tell you who. Right? I know. Sucks that I can't play them all. And we're just dead next turn, right? I don't know why our land is so uh, uncooperative here.
They are using the knight to convoke. Very good. Still hitting us for four minimum. Another knight. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're going straight to London. Nice, dude. This is insane. They have 32 life. What a legend, bro. They're pretty much tapped out, but they have so much life that I just don't think it matters. And there's the star of the show with another knight. Oh my god. I can't believe they're not banning this deck or doing anything to it. There's like, no, it's fine. No, I we think it's fine. We looked at it and uh, we couldn't see any problems with it. <laughs> We've life gained too, but it's just not enough. That's crazy. I have life gain too. I just wish I was Boros Convoke deck though, you know? Maybe we put the knight in this deck. They screw it. I don't know. That flyer's really good though, right? Crazy. Man, you're insane. You've lost your mind. Wow. We we've come we just look at the three damage I guess I don't know. That's insane. Taking seven. <laughs> like I said, a monster. Down to eighteen. If we can survive this, I'm going straight to London myself. We get them all, right? Get out of here, Boros player! <laughs> Woo! Ah! Uh? Ah! Uh? Okay, okay. They were doing it as good as it could be done, and we still come out on top. Let's keep seven. Ah, ossification. No, that's int well. It's the right play, I guess. Okay, smart. They probably just have uh, removal for the creatures as well, right? I feel like it's still something we take. Just because it can come back. Holy. All right, we potentially have a, a play line here. 
It's not a great one, but it's a start. I think it's good. This Golgari deck is fantastic. Oh, what am I doing? Oops. I should have played this first. Missing out on a couple life. Hopefully it's not the uh, determining factor here. They need removal on the Mirror of the Wilds, but we have backup, which is great. Seems fine. It's not great, obviously, but... Mosswood is pretty decent. To the grave, interesting. Surveilling. They're just looking for their seven land. Oh god. Just going to Token Town, if you will. Looking for our fifth. Plenty of blockers, as long as they don't get a field wipe. Like, I can kick this command. Oh! No! This is a fun game, I was thinking. Gitrog is pretty cool. I'm going to lose some life. We could deal four. Hey, thank you for the raid. Appreciate that. I hope you're having a magical day. Uh, we just got wrecked. So now I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm doing. I think the life gain's great. We can make treasures, but I don't want to tap at this point. We need to get really lucky. We can block the Sentinels. Uh, there is a cottage here as well. Oh. Sentinel with Gitrog. That's pretty good. The Trample Delphia is phenomenal. We had an amazing field state. Uh, we were comboing and wamboing. Then we got hit with the Gix's command. Literally cleaned house. That is just crazy. I don't like this at all. Forced into uh, suboptimal blocks here. Now, of course, we top deck a land. Ah! A 
opponent goes first, let's keep seven. The hand is way too heavy. It's uh, it's one of those things. The arena shufflers. It's own beast to tame, right? Like it's hard to explain, really. Which, unfortunately, is why really low to the ground aggro decks thrive so much. Like, what is this, really? There's 24 land in deck. And 8 big drops. I guess they take the terror, because why bother? It's also cheaper. What a hand. They're just like, I hate this game. I get it, dude. I'm not going to show them the land. I will attack with this, though. I need the ramp. No creatures yet, though. Excuse me. I didn't even... I had to get the first one with my hands. <laughs> this wasn't good. <laughs> That was a uh, quick onset. Okay, we can create a treasure. Good for us. We still need a land or two. Land and treasure. A farmhand would be good. It would be a creature for a treasure as well as a land. I mean, I guess. Do you have a Rafine? Right? I'd assume. Do I double block this? I also assume. Right? And then, you know, that's dead, which is good news. This is also uh, fairly acceptable, creating another artifact. Good game. I mean, they see what's coming. They don't like it. We're going to get there. Nice. All right, opponent goes first. Let's keep seven. Land looks good. Just need a molten duplication and like a uh, five drop. Or seven drop. Terror, ballpark. No! Rude. It's a real rude boy, huh? Hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello, hello, hello. Molten duplication is the card we're looking for, Arena. <clears throat> if you're curious. Why? Are you so cruel? What a freaking bully. I'm not impressed. If they have even more removal, I'm going to throw a fit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Draw is good, but this is okay, too. I guess it doesn't matter. We're both essentially the same. Mm. 
Do I slay the veteran? Yeah. That way, if they do play something that capitalizes off the life gain, like, well, we probably wouldn't be able to take it if it was a voice because this takes it to three and that would take it to four and out of range, right? So, you know, we just take what we can get while we can get it. I hate you. If I top deck a fifth land, I'm going to freak out. It better be a molten duplication. This is going to go in the air, and I could just chump block it otherwise. So I'll take my damage. Mm, Phantom's decent. You know, it's still life game. Oh, that's pretty good, right? Interesting. Unexpected. Well, there's my fifth land. No attack. Good game. I think so, too. Another voice. Dude, your draw is so stacked. That's not even funny. I mean, it's impressive, though. Very good. Going first. It's always a good sign. I think. Gala on two. Unless we need removal, but we could probably hold it for a turn. Right? Like, Is that going to be such a threat? Watch it make a difference. <laughs> Just immediately convokes. Dang it. I mean, they could if they have like a red source of Gleeful. But this is like... The, so they don't have a red source for that Gleeful. Um, having to use the Cavern as a vampire kind of sucks. Taking the inspector, I think, is good, but this opens up the attack lane. Too many lands in hand. It is what it is. Probably blood token cycle. Okay, here's the human land. Evangelist, oh, that's a great card. Snag that. It's just not worth it yet. Hold it for something better. Down to 15. A recruiter? No, it's a knight. Invoking. Oh, that's so good. Yikes. Drawing two. 
playing another creature. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Okay, finally. I just need another creature. Right, because we have to play a creature on top of them. I think it's just the plus one counter this time. The life would be good, but defending and removing one would be maybe better. They probably have a recruiter, and then I don't want to block anyways. Yep. Next turn anyways, though. So let me, I guess that's good. Should I force it? That would give me the creature. Then I'm not relying on a top deck. It is what it is, because Lord knows we don't draw it. Just we're not paying life more than we need to. And then we're copying the token that we made. This can now gain life. And make a treasure, a secondary triggers. This attacks because it self-sacrifices. So it's not great. We still need to survive like a few turns, you know? Like, this recruiter is just gas. And if they have another land, they can play the vampire, uh, sanguine, evangelist uh, for the double creature and battle cry with the haste via the recruiter on top of it. That would be absolutely disgusting. Looks like we'll just be waiting for next turn, they're going to say. Which is fine. I mean, look how many creatures. This is ridiculous, right? Oh, it's fine. And then this way they can scry via the tokens and uh, I don't think they're really worried about defending. Uh, just looking for more creatures to play in conjunction with the recruiter. It's ridiculous. I'm sure you've played against the Boros deck before. It's, it's world class. It literally does not lose. No blocks for me. Ouch. I need a creature off the top. Vaultborn Tyrant? No, that's not the worst, though. Maybe some additional draw would be good. Alright. Gallon's only triggering once for the life game, which kind of sucks, too, right? We need far more life than that. And I think they still just bash through, right? Oh, no creatures before. Ay, ay, ay. That's ridiculous. It's just lethal. 14 life. You have battle cry, bro. Bro, you have battle cry. You're going to declare attackers one by one? They're all attacking for three. Or four. Come on. Wow, that's so conservative. <clears throat> Not a fan. I mean, I don't think it's super great for them either. We want to keep an untoken alive.
I wouldn't mind double blocking this either. Taking nine. That's a lot. We gain a bunch of that life back, though. We need to top deck a creature. Badly. Just give me a vault born off the top, baby. No! <laughs> Another. <laughs> Bro. You freaking bully, dude. Another night, too? No way. Are you kidding me? What a Chatosaurus Rex. Oh my god, dude. Settle down, double bunny. You're hilarious. You think you're so funny. <laughs> nice draw, HGG. Thanks. Ah, it's a good game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Oakley, donkley. Um, you know, maybe if they cast a Gix's command. <laughs> Famous last words. Has that ever happened to you? Isn't that incredible? The deck is really cool, but, you know, let's talk about some other stuff. Artifact entering could trigger the dissident. I don't mind. Pretty decent. But where do you fit it in the build, you know? Uh, Delaney. Delney, sorry. I like to call her Delaney. Uh, Delney um, can double the veteran, can double the worm, can double the gallop. Well, can double the worm for a time. Uh, can double gallop potentially for a time. Uh, but can double the matter weaver, which is really good. Also making them unblockable. Mm, okay, Trailblazer we cut, but I wanted to keep it around because it's pretty good. The Thousandth Moon I'm honestly considering and it can help fill the gap because uh, between three, we're in five and we're in seven and it's like Thousandth Moon I think would fit in the deck much better earlier on, okay? And then on a similar note, ooh, 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 the Roaming Throne. Yeah, well, it could double humans, and that would be the veteran. That would be the matter weaver. Uh, that would be very good. This is triggered uh, or activated, and I think it's only triggered. Um, so that's kind of a bummer, but nonetheless, uh, still very, very good there. And you know, you could potentially even, if you wanted, choose some other stuff. Um, and then, so like you could copy the throne because it's doubling and. I don't know. They, like, there's there's potentially something here as well. Um, who for thought? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an absolute magical day. I can't wait to see you soon in the next. Uh, literally counting down the days to Bloomboro. Very excited for that uh, this fall as well as rotation. If you're interested in rotation proof decks, don't hold back. Let me know in the comments below what you're interested in seeing. Cheers. And I'll see you soon.